Welcome back everybody, Silas here today and I'm going to take you guys along with me. We're going to see what a typical day for me consists of. A lot of people say, oh why don't you do this, why don't you do that, and the reason is, is I'm just so busy I can't do it all. And I don't think people believe me sometimes, so you guys are going to come along with me. I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and we're just going to do whatever I was going to do today. I don't have any specific plans other than dragging this bus out, but whatever else happens, you guys will be along for the ride. Now I didn't film what happened this morning this morning, like early this morning. I usually wake up between 5.30 and 6.30. I don't use an alarm, my body just wakes me up. Usually it's around a quarter till six. Today was a typical day. I woke up at a quarter till six. I spent a little bit of time in devotion, and then I had some time after that that I spent editing video. About a quarter after seven, I hit the road, came out here. They're coming to pick this bus up later today. I don't know for sure what time, so I wanted to have out and ready to go. It's almost eight o'clock now, so I'm gonna hit the road and I'm gonna go to the yard, and I think I'm gonna crush some cars today, unless it's too muddy, and I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. We got some absolutely torrential rain last night. It was just an absolute drencher for about three hours just pouring down rain and then it sprinkled for a while after that so this is the most water we've had out here in a long time really probably got more rain last night than we have in the last four or five months put together but the good news is as you guys may remember I have a massive hole in the ground where I did right about here somewhere and every door that's right, right here and whenever I would load those trucks I'd drive down that hole and it would always be such a, a scary ride going down in that hole and every time I'd forget it was there I'd hit it too fast and I'd go bouncing so a guy had this load of dirt and he said, like, I'll take a hundred bucks for it. And I said, you bet. So he brought it out, dumped it right here. I don't have the bucket here, so I'm going to have to smooth it out with the forks the best I can. But this is going to make my life so much better having this here filling that hole in. Okay, slowly but surely making progress. I've had a bunch of people coming out. I had a couple converters come in. I had to buy those. I had a couple subscribers stop by and they wanted to talk for a while about some things. And so I talked to them. They're looking around now, see if they can find anything to buy. Then I had to deal with some more phone calls. So I've probably spent about two and a half hours today talking on the phone or in person. So that's why my days get away from me and why this place never seems to get cleaned up. But anyway, I got that 57 cleaned out. Now what I'm doing now is I'm making the thumbnail. And sometimes I like to get a thumbnail that's really catchy. And so this is what I did. I stuck it in the crusher and I'm not actually crushing this car I have a guy here coming to pick it up here in a little bit he's not here yet but he'll be here shortly and so I got it all cleaned out I just stuck it in there I'll take a picture of that and that'll be the thumbnail of this video so then once I get that done I'll pull it back out take it back out there have it ready to load and I'm gonna start crushing some more cars I don't have a whole lot of time I've got about about 30 minutes left before lunchtime so if I don't eat lunch at that point in time I won't get lunch so as soon as I do this I'll probably crush one more bundle and then I'm gonna head out
Now, normally when I go to lunch, I try to eat at least somewhat healthy. I'll go somewhere like Subway or, or someplace like that where I can get something that's actually halfway good. Or sometimes I'll go home and sometimes I just don't eat at all. I just wait until I get home in the evening. It's not going to hurt you to skip a meal every now and then. But anyway, kind of my little ritual I have is, is I go get my lunch if I'm going to eat lunch. I'll pull up here, I'll sit here and eat it, and while I eat it, I look at Marketplace. And I was looking at Marketplace, and I saw this. It's a 1947 Dodge for 750 bucks. It's about an hour and a half away from me. Pretty cool truck. Everybody says, where do you find all your vehicles at? That's how I find them. It just got listed, so I messaged the guy, and he's supposed to call me here in just a minute. I'll work out the details of exactly where it's at, and I'll probably go pick it up tomorrow. There we go, I just got the truck bought, talked to him on the phone, he sent me his info, I PayPal'd him the money, and so now, like I say, probably tomorrow after I get off work, I'll go pick it up. And that's the name of the game on these old trucks, is you just gotta be constantly looking for them, constantly looking for them, and you won't get them all. There's a lot of good deals. Like if you remember my farm cleanup I did where that 55 Chevy was in the barn, there was that really old diesel generator in the barn as well, and there were some old tractors and that other old road grader up front, all that stuff. I tried and tried and tried and tried to buy that stuff from the grandson. And then after the grandmother died, the granddaughter came in, and she just wanted the stuff gone, so she called a guy, and he just bought everything for dirt, dirt, dirt cheap, about a third of what I had offered for it all. And the grandson didn't say a word to her, and so I stopped in out there and had a few words with him. I wasn't rude, but I just talked to him like, what's up with this? And I said, oh, I forgot, forgot. <laughs> What do you do? Like I say, you can't buy them all, but I did get the Dodge Bot, so I'm gonna go pick it up and that'll make it really cool. I probably won't cut that one up. In the pictures, it looks like it's pretty nice still, and so I'll probably try to find a home for that one, or at least the cab in the clip. But with that, I'm gonna eat my lunch, get back out there, load up that 57 whenever he gets here, and then I don't know what else is going on this afternoon. Hopefully I can get some cars crushed. Mm -hmm. with that I think I'm about done at this location the crusher is just about out of fuel I, well, I forgot all about it and the other day it was actually pretty low so I checked it again now and uh, it, it's running on fumes so I just shut it off because that thing is a nightmare to get going again once it runs out of fuel I got quite a bit done today considering I spent quite a bit of time talking to people but I got the road open all the way down to the other end again I got two loads of cars on the ground now well I say two loads almost two loads I've got to crush one more car and then I'll have enough for the second load now you may notice I didn't cr crush these quite as flat as I usually do, and the reason why is because I've been overloading these semis. They can't haul that much weight, so I still want them to look like they're full, so I've just been crushing them halfway. It's easier on the equipment to crush them halfway anyway. Now that I have the road open, my next goal is, is I want to kind of widen the road in here up. I've got like that sport track up on top and that van underneath it and whatever that SUV behind that is. And over here I've got that black little miniature SUV up on top and the car under it and just all the way around this corner I want to widen this up to where I can carry bundles through there without worrying about hitting and snagging something. And uh, if I get a good full day of crushing I should be able to do all of that in one day. And that's if I get a full day of crushing. As you guys saw today I probably spent probably probably a good three and a half hours so far today uh, talking with people and buying converters and dealing with customers and answering phone calls and every check that we write when they go to the bank, if they try to cash it, the bank calls us to make sure it's okay to cash because we've had problems with that in the past with people stealing the account number. So the bank verifies every single check. So, you know, there's a minute, minute and a half phone call every time I write a check. But on the side note, Mondays are almost always the busiest day. Mondays and Fridays are usually my busiest days. The rest of the week slows down quite a bit. And Thursday, it's supposed to be freezing cold and blowing snow. So it'll be really slow that day. So I should be able to get quite a bit done this week. And then also, I almost forgot to show you guys this, but the guy that brought that or bought that 57 Chevy from me, he gave me some cash and he traded me a really cool old door for that car. So I'm gonna show this to you. Check that door out. That's a really cool one. Now I'm pretty sure somebody painted that on there. I don't think that's original paint. I, like I'm 99% sure that's not original. Somebody's put those letters on there, but they did a really good job of it. It made them look vintage. They did a good job of, of patina paint on this. And so it just looks really cool. 
I don't know if I'm going to keep it or sell it. I'll probably keep it for a while until I get tired of it and find something else and then I'll sell it. But I've got to grab that and throw it in my truck and I've got to cut one converter off and throw it in my truck. That's one I ripped off of that van, that gold van, and the whole exhaust decided to come off. So I got to get the saws all out, trim that up a little bit. And with that, I am almost done for the day. It's 5.30 right now and I'm still not done. I got here actually, it was about 3.45 and they got here right after I got here to pick up that bus. I put that on time lapse, we loaded that up. The guy that actually bought the bus wasn't the one that picked it up. The guy that came and picked the bus up actually has Corey Wheat Customs on YouTube. So uh, you can check him out. He was a real cool guy, I'd never met him before. So I got to talk to him for a while and took him around the yard, gave him a tour. He fell in love with a bunch of stuff here and he ended up buying a little a gas pump I had and then he also bought this truck right here. This green Federal, the blue Federal is sold to somebody else, but he bought the green Federal here, gave me a deposit on it, said he'll come back in a couple weeks or three weeks or however long it takes and I'll come back and get it. He was also super interested in buying the big window, 59 or oh, it's a 60 cab over there. And then I also have that big rig uh, stub nose welding truck Ford out back that kind of the same color as that one over there, kind of that teal color. He was interested in that one as well, so uh, he's going to try to make a trailer load of stuff and come back and get that. But yeah, it was really cool getting to meet him, and uh, that's why it, it's good to make connections in this, because I had a friend of mine that has Hardcore Fab on YouTube. He's a local guy here, and uh, he does really cool stuff. Check him out too. But uh, he set me up with this guy that wanted to buy the bus. The guy that wanted to buy the bus jokingly texted the guy that picked it up, and he's like, hey, I want to buy this bus, but it's in Kansas. And he says, well, what town in Kansas? And he said, Hutchinson. And he said, well, actually, I'm going to Hutchinson anyway because he was picking up some stuff from Anthony. And so it just happened to work out that he was going to have an empty spot on his trailer. And so he came and picked the bus up. And then he was able to walk around and he was able to pick out some stuff and picked out that cab there and maybe some other stuff. And so it just works out for everybody. So anyway, that took about two hours to show him around, get that bus loaded and all that sort of stuff. And so I've got a couple trucks that came in out back this morning. Skyler brought them in and dumped them off. I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. I just took a picture of one of them this morning. It was that Orange International that was next to the bus. And then he brought another one later on in the day. I've got a guy interested in the Orange International. So I'm headed back there now to take some pictures of it. He also really wanted to buy this old International back here, but that's one that my buyer from Kentucky bought. And that's why I need to get all the stuff that's sold, like that one, this one, and the cab off of this, no, this one, this one over here. I need to get all the ones that are sold gathered up and put in one location. That way they can just come pick them up and I can get the stuff out of here. That way there's no confusion when I have people out here looking around to see what they can buy. Awkward saying, oh no, that one's sold. Oh no, that one's sold. If I had everything organized, I could just say everything in this area is sold. Everything else is available. There's the truck back there that he's thinking about buying. That old, uh, I forget what series they called those. Is that the, uh, not the N series or is that the N series? I can't remember now. Here's the one truck that came in. I have not seen this truck at all other than one picture from a distance. Not even sure what year it is. International. Let's check it out. It's a rat nest inside, that's for sure. But it's got the cool dash in it. And just looking at the cab, it looks pretty solid. There might be a little bit of rust in the floors from the rat nest, but you know, really, it actually looks pretty solid. The nose is pretty good on it. Looks like this door is a little bit kinked at the top. Looks like they shut something in the door or something, but that's actually a very solid cab. A BC-160, so I uh, might be able to find a home for that cab. And then check out the bed on this thing. This is a really cool bed. It's like a service bed slash fuel bed. Oh wow, check that out. Man, that is a cool bed. I like that. Oh yeah, that is. That is far out. I like that bed. I think that bed will sell to somebody too. Find a rat rod guy that's into that type of stuff. Because it's real short because that tank up there is an accessory tank. So the bed actually starts right about there to the back. You could put that on a real short chassis like that other international that I have. That uh, blue and white one back there. It would fit right on there. They need to have a pretty sweet looking little rig. But yeah, we'll try to find a home for that for sure. So probably some pretty good stuff on that. Everybody always asks what do I pay for stuff. This truck I gave $1,100 for. And I, like I said, I bought it off of one picture, kind of took a chance on it, but uh, it worked out in my favor this time. And then here's the other one. This is another one here. 
kind of just took a chance on it. I bought this one here off of two pictures, actually. I actually got a second picture on this one. It was a little bit cheaper, though. I think I gave 800 for this one, something like that. It's a little bit beat up in the face, missing the front bumper. But it's a very solid truck. These trucks are usually rusted to nothing. And I even got the title to this one. It's a 73 model. A little bit of a rat nest inside, but looks like the floors are pretty solid in it. The roof is solid. It's an automatic truck, huh? That's kind of crazy for an international. Automatic four wheel drive, three quarter ton. Huh, I'm gonna see if I can get the hood open real quick. Solid rat nest. Big old rat nest under the hood. These little pack rats, they like making their nests under the hood of these vehicles. And all you have to do to prevent that is if instead of shutting the hood all the way, you shut it partially like that. That way the wind can't blow it open still. Be it it's like this to where cold air can blow in there during the winter time and because of that cold air blowing in there and just a little bit of weather getting in rats won't build a nest same thing with the interior if you just crack your windows a little bit i mean it's not foolproof every now and then they'll go ahead and build a nest anyway but it's much better than just leaving them completely sealed up but yeah i look the truck over and the only rust i can find in the whole truck is that spot right there the floors are rock solid the bed floors are solid the fenders are solid. Everything on this truck is rock solid. Like I say, it's a little beat up in the face, but man, as far as rust goes, you'd be hard pressed to find one with less rust in it. Rust in it, especially for one of these trucks. Like I say, these things are always rust buckets, but this is a very solid truck. A friend of mine just sent me this picture. Check this out. I'm gonna have to start marketing my stuff to churches. <laughs> I can't believe. I, I, I mean, it looks like they have some bus signs in the background, so maybe they're just doing like a, a pledge drive or maybe a, a Sunday school thing or something like that. I don't know, but. It just strikes me as really funny to see that in a church. So yeah, both trucks, that one back there and the other tanker truck, pretty good deals. Uh, sometimes that's just the name of the game. When you buy vehicles, you're buying them off maybe one, maybe two pictures. Sometimes I don't even get pictures. And people wonder how I get so much stuff out here. Like <laughs> Corey, when he was here earlier, saying, how do you come up with so much stuff? And I was, I told him about these trucks that I didn't even get to see them. I just bought them. Yeah, you can get into trouble doing that, but in my price range that I'm buying stuff and the, you know, the, the $500 to $1,500 range, you can't get hurt that bad. Like that tanker truck right there. I could take that truck, rip the radiator out of it, and probably get about $1,300, maybe $1,400 scrap out of it. So I could make two, $300 right now if I had to. Like if I got it and it was just a total piece of junk, that's what I would do. But I think I can make quite a bit more than that, just go ahead and pulling it apart. But that's how I get so much stuff is because people know I don't mess around. If they have something in that price range, I'm probably going to buy it. I'll just, I'm not going to knock them down on price or anything like that. I just, here's the money, here's the truck, good to go. But it is now a quarter after six. I am pretty well worn out. I've been going at it for 13 hours almost now, 12 hours. I don't know, I can't even think. I'm really tired. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go home, eat some dinner, spend a little bit of time with the family, and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start editing. I've already got a video ready to be released uh, tomorrow night anyway as of filming this. I want to try to work ahead a little bit because I want to do a camping video later this week. So after I spend some time with the family, I'm probably going to go ahead and edit another video to come out later in the week. That way I don't have to worry about editing later. As far as what's going on the rest of this week, I've got some pretty cool stuff coming in. I've got some old, a uh, couple old trucks coming in, I believe. I got some old grills and some uh, tractor parts coming in for a uh, art type stuff. There's a bunch of stuff going on this week. So what I'm probably going to do for the rest of the week is today was just Monday. And this is what a typical Monday is like for me. The rest of the week I'm probably going to do one video for the whole week and put it all together. I say that but I'm also going to be doing a camping video but the camping video will be on the second channel so if you have not checked out the second channel be sure to go over and do that. Link is in the description below. But with that I am done for today. I'm not going to film anything else. I know this video is a little bit different but I just wanted you guys to know what a typical day consists of with me. And oh and I also forgot to mention I got I don't even know how many emails and messages today but I was dealing with people on there as well all day long. And so it's just nonstop go, 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 go for me every single day. So please don't be offended if you kind of fall through the cracks and I don't see your message, I don't see your email, things like that. With that, I'm gonna let you all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and remember to get out there and find an adventure. And we'll see you on the next one.